Cotton Mill Ghost, a true story, a story from over 100 years ago, supports the notions that ghosts stick around for a reason, to conclude unfinished business, to impart a final message, or to accomplish some necessary task. That story is set in Burlington, Vermont. Early in the 20th century, a specter called the Cotton Mill Ghost haunted the area around Lakeside Avenue in Burlington. What makes it differ from most other ghost stories is that literally hundreds of people saw the phantom. In fact, its many appearances made ghost hunting a popular pastime for Burlingtonians and accounts from the time suggest that searchers were rarely disappointed. The events reported in a series of articles in the Burlington Free Press during 1900 and, and 1901 began when a 22-year-old French-Canadian laborer named Marie Blay moved into one of the factory tenements in Lakeside Park. She worked at the nearby Queen City Cotton Mill, still standing and today housing a number of small companies. Early in the evening of June 28, 1900, Marie and two companions and her sister and a friend were running back after a work break. A fierce storm raged around them and heavy winds lent force to the stabbing rain. As the girls raced towards the mill, the 640 train was heading up the railroad tracks from Rutland. Two of the girls dashed safely across the tracks, but something happened to Marie. Maybe she tripped. Maybe her skirt caught on a railroad spike. Maybe the rain blinded her or the wind knocked her down. Or perhaps she was just too slow. In any event, the engine struck Marie, sending her body 75 feet through the air and killing her instantly. But the big news was yet to come. People soon began to report seeing Marie in the area where she died. Her ghostly form was spotted near the tracks, around the tenement houses, even in the cotton mill itself. Mill workers reported her transparent outline hoovering near their looms at night. Others saw Marie glassy-eyed and pale, wandering aimlessly in the workplace. That fall, frequent appearances of the ghost drew crowds of hopeful spectators to the cotton mill, where witnesses reported strange noises and other unsettling phenomena. A year after Marie's death, she was still making her presence known. On May the 8th, 1901, the Free Press said her ghost had appeared again near the lake. Crowds of ghost hunters quickly followed. Scary details became associated with the story. For instance, people repeatedly heard a soul sheng shriek near the spot where Marie had died. Phantom obstructions appeared on the tracks and then vanished when the train slowed or stopped to avoid them. The engine's headlight mysteriously failed in the vicinity of the crash. Just as chilling, Marie would unfailingly appear to the same engineer at the same spot every time he drove the train north from Rutland. It is said that her ghost pursued the poor man so relentlessly that he eventually quit his job. The story of Marie's death and supernatural reappearance became so pervasive that crowds flocked to the spot night after night. But, in time, Marie failed to meet them. One possible explanation for Marie's sudden departure from the earthly plane came in 1908, eight years after her death. That year, the railroad, fearing more train-pedestrian collisions, installed an elevated bridge at the very spot where Marie had met her end. People could now enter the factory by crossing an underpass so no one ever had to set foot on a railroad track again. No one really knows, but perhaps in her wanderings, Marie was trying to get the train to slow down as it passed that fatal spot. And because the bridge is still there today, Marie no longer needs to be.